Hello and welcome to this week's edition of BOI Impact. I am Hadiza Olao Shibiko. I'm particularly excited about today's program for so many reasons. Nigeria is getting its first ever gold refinery and the aim is to accentuate the wealth creation opportunities of gold mining that is being pioneered by a young, brilliant and game-changing woman, Nere Teriba. She is the founder and vice chairman of Ken Smith Trade and Company Limited. As an entrepreneur, mediator and strategist, she has worked for sustainable community solutions in many countries. She also consults for Kaduna Mining Development Company and the Federal Ministry of Mines and Steel Development. Nere holds BSc and MSc degrees in electrical and computer engineering from the Carnegie Mellon University in Pennsylvania, United States of America. Another reason for my excitement is the activities of the company that are gold exploration, mining, processing, and trading. The company pioneered several gold artisanal mining initiatives, including Zokia Systems, a mobile technology platform for artisanal miners. This is a very good example of value addition to natural resources. Indeed, Nigeria is blessed with abundant minerals, gold inclusive. The company currently manages several gold exploration concessions, as well as gold processing units in Oshun State. In addition, the company engages in consulting with regards to logistics, strategy for development and sustainability. Please recall that the Federal Government of Nigeria, through the Federal Ministry of Mines and Steel Development, partnered with the Bank of Industry in 2017 to establish the 5 billion Naira Artisanal and Small Scale Miners ESM Matching Fund to, amongst other things, address the issue of insufficient funding and access to capital, which is a major factor militating against artisanal and small scale miners who account for about 80% of the activities in the mining sector in the country. Once gold is mentioned, countries like Dubai, Italy, and Saudi Arabia readily comes to mind. But here we are in Nigeria, having a company like Ken Smith Trade and Company Limited that is developing Nigeria's first gold refinery with a vision to lead the establishment of West Africa as a gold market hub. Gold deposits are found in many parts of the country, especially in many northern states and Oshun State in the south. Ken Smith utilized the loan gotten from the Bank of Industry to fund artisanal gold miners, smelters, and other dependencies in the gold value chain. BOI's Impact Crew had a one-on-one -on -one interview with the promoter who impressed us with her depth of knowledge and opened our eyes to the abundant opportunities and potentials this our beloved country Nigeria has. I would describe the industry as being more artisanal and small scale in terms of mining capacity. There, there is one large project, uh, a gold mine project, this, the, by Thor Exploration, Segula Line, Ocean State. That's the only notable large gold project. Otherwise, everything is artisanal to small scale. Um, what I would say that we've, the gap we filled is maybe more integrating the value chain from mine fully to market. Usually in the sector, you find people who are mining um, maybe some people who are trading, but there hasn't been a full integration, is what I would say has been um, maybe missing thus far. And part of that has just not allowed maybe enough visibility into the opportunities for the sector. I think I would say for me the biggest opportunity I see is for the jewelry industry and jewelry production. Um, Nigeria is well known in the jewelry markets, Dubai, Italy, and India for its consumption of jewelry. And yet we don't really produce. And just like the way I see the music industry and the fashion industry, there was a time where Nigeria was importing, but now we produce. And our culture, our flair, our style is very unique. So I really feel that the, the jewelry industry is the biggest, um, should I say value, just sitting there untapped for, for us. Looking at countries like Italy, United Arab Emirates and India. Would you say that Nigeria has opportunity to also tap into the gold business? 
I think the biggest issue we've had connecting to Nigeria and to the international market would be in terms of transparency and traceability. The big thing now for gold and conflict minerals and even precious gemstones like diamonds, Kimberley process, um, even the Frank, Dodd-Frank Act has a lot to do with money laundry, tracing um, the source of such precious metals. And there's almost no international buyer of repute that will not need that data. There's OECD guidelines um, for gold, but traceability and transparency is, is the most important one. And I think for us, at least in our gold buying program, we have taken, this is why it took a while, we've taken a lot of steps to put those things in process. Like I said, we couldn't deal with suppliers or miners who don't have bank accounts, who don't have ID cards, who can be traced. So it's taken a lot to build trust and build that relationship and to encourage them and show them the incentives of formalization and those things. So I think that's really the big thing for the international market. They, they do not want to deal with gold in the bubble. So I feel like once traceability and transparency are put in place in the whole supply chain, we're ready for the international market. The gold produced in Nigeria, are they of the same quality with what you get in countries like Italy that is well known for their 18 karat gold, in countries like UAE that is well known for their 22 and 24 karat gold? Are, are golds of that quality? The carrot is just really about the purity. And um, so usually you could even have gold that's pure when it's been refined or mined. But oftentimes when it comes to jewelry, the, the purer the gold is, the softer it is. So oftentimes 24 karat is too soft. You'll make your jewelry brittle. So usually you want to add another metal. That's how you alloy it to bring the carrot down. So um, Italians especially prefer 18 karat. Um, it's, it's stronger. But you will find that India, Eastern culture, the Middle East, they prefer 23, 22 karat because gold for them is a store of value. It's not just about beauty. So in the, for them, the gold has um, more value as a, as a commodity, as storage, while also having the beauty um, factor. But to answer your question, I would say that in Nigeria, for us, we found that depending on where it is, the gold being, being uh, mined comes in varying purity. Same thing, because sometimes the ore naturally may have more iron. Some ores have silver with them. So it's almost like you're having natural alloys coming out and how you're extracting. But that said, the gold you get in Oshun State is very pure. It's between 22 and 23.6 carat, just um, on its own mind. Not much impurities alloyed. Um, in other parts of Nigeria, you may, you may find gold 14 carat, 18. But yeah, so the summary to, to answer your question, really, the gold we mine in Nigeria is on par in the world. In fact, in Dubai, they know Nigeria's gold. What potential contribution can a thriving gold mining value chain have for the Nigerian economy, looking at job creation and GDP contribution? I'll start with job creation. There's already, this is the thing that's hard, a potential of, I would say, maybe a million informal workers or people informally, should I say, in the gold value chain. Formalization on, on, alone brings them properly into the, um, into the economic framework. We, let me see, we about 400, we had about 400 bank accounts that we opened. We had about 300 plus businesses that we helped register in about a year. And these were the people who were a lot more, the bigger people that already, quite frankly, were doing a lot of money, but without bank accounts and without documentation. So we started there. But if you look at even what I would say their, their network or their staff are, it's quite extensive. So for example, in the project we were doing with BOI, the BOI pilot from the ESM loan in Ocean State, one mining group is about eight to 10 people. So one person in charge of eight to 10 people. And we're just dealing with the one, not his, his eight or nine. So you can just imagine the, the exponential effect of the millions of people potentially that are affected down the line by, by this industry. 
So that's what I would say for job creation. Now, there's even a whole new development when you talk about jewelry. We have industries that don't even exist yet, ancillary services, um, vaulting, secure logistics, other things that will spin off from a structured industry. So I really, I don't like to exaggerate numbers too much, but I really think that there's a huge potential there. What else do you want to share with those that are watching us right now and are interested in assessing this fund? From my understanding of the ESM fund, the Ministry of Mines and Steel Development had some fund from their natural endowment fund and they, I think they gave, BOI became the custodian yeah. for them with the, of, yeah. of the fund. And um, it's just an amazing, should I say, incentive single interest loan for the for the sector for equipment for small scale and artisanal miners so just by being in the industry of course i heard about the fund and um, i think at first i just maybe was a little bit skeptical like is this is this real but yes yeah, so that's how I, I heard about the fund just by nature of being in the industry a bank is a bank it's not a grant no one is sharing money for dash it's, it's money that's been borrowed and has to be returned to clarify what we did, the reason we stepped in for this loan was for our suppliers as a guarantor. So we looked at our suppliers and the problem they all had is they're like, look, this is a this ESM fund. I can't even get 100,000. I can't get 200,000. I can't even get 500,000. They can't get any money. But a lot of the reasons have been what I told you. Their financial history, they don't have bank accounts. Their, the structure that they had. And in some cases, it's true, the requirements were not difficult. They just needed to get, um, I think like a, I think like a guarantor or something, like a level, maybe in, in level 12, something, a higher level civil servant to maybe guarantee them. So when we looked at this, we said, look, we, we've already done enough work now to structure our supply chain. Um, we know how to hold them. We know how to work this out. We'll step in and be a guarantor to help them access this loan as a company. Us accessing the loan shows people that it exists. Like I said, I was one of the early skeptics. It exists. We accessed it. It's been successful so far. I think one thing that has been great, for example, has been the single-digit interest. Gold is one of those industries where everybody hears gold and they think somebody's making billions of dollars. It doesn't work that way. In the gold industry, all the margins are very, very small along the value chain. And you just pass on the margin, small, 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 small. So. For, for something like gold, having a loan with such with double interest rates would be very painful. But the single interest rate for gold has just been ideal for at least the gold sector for mining and trade. So I think that has been the biggest impact, um, the, the interest rate. But also um, maybe just the timing for us. We've been fortunate that we're presently in a bull market for gold. So gold is doing well. There's a demand for big demand for gold. So that as well. So it's been very timely. The the BOI is some fun. Very time, timely for the, for the sector. So what's your impression about the artisanal and small scale miners fund? I think what I would say for the ASM fund in particular is it's a very good opportunity. It's a very good opportunity for our sector, especially um, artisanal small scale mining, um, those that need equipment, especially. If you're sure, you know your business, you know what you're doing. I encourage other companies, mining companies, that have maybe sat on the sidelines and looked at this and said, is this real? I really want to encourage them to, to come ahead. There's, there's no time like this where, look at the economic crisis in the world, where you're going to find such low interest rates. And the fund, I'm not sure how long the fund will be available, but that opportunity. For gold, um, I really do think, like I said, with jewelry, your market is there. It's already a market. Lagos, Port Harcourt, Kano, Abuja, Kaduna, Senegal, around. There's, you know the, we know the market. And I find that most people, especially when I meet Nigerian women, they have an idea of, they know the jewelry they like, they know the jewelry their mothers like, they know the jewelry they wear for work. It's not, in terms of taste, it's there. I think, of course, the technical skill, working with partnership to get what we need done. But I really feel that the, the the industry for jewelry is huge. Look at even what happened right now with the coronavirus. A lot of women I hear of that usually travel to go and buy jewelry for weddings. No. So even some of the jewelers have been reaching out to us saying the gold they import 
because they, they were importing ready-made alloys. They can't even access raw material because of the lockdown. But if we were producing our own jewelry, our own metals, our own alloys. So I, I see this as a great opportunity for, for Nigeria and for the sector. The coronavirus pandemic has affected a lot of businesses all over the world. But you mentioned something about the fact that there's a bit of an advantage given the gold business in Nigeria. Can you please highlight a little bit more on that? I think for, for some people, we could never imagine a world where importation, uh, where you would have such a lag or a block on importation, not an embargo. You just couldn't. And if you can, you're going to have to even pay. Imports are already expensive in Nigeria, but I've been hearing, even for me with food, the ones I buy, but hearing about the cost of things right now in the market because of it being imported. And then there are some things that you can't even access. So that's what I'll say the plus is. The plus has been really highlighting to people the need, the opportunity that they may not have seen before. But at the same time, for us that produce gold, these supply disruptions and also gold's also economic, economic impact have put higher value um, on gold. It is worthy to note that since the disbursement of loans to Ken Smith, over 61 mining groups consisting of over 488 miners have been impacted by participating in the company's gold sourcing program. For us, it was, a, it was the right time. And only the bank of industry really could have done that. And if you look at that for, I think for the sector now, those who may be, especially let me stick to the ASM fund, I can speak for mining, I'm not sure about others. But those of us who are mining, everywhere I know, the physical, there is a physical demand for metals. And supply has been cut off. Even if there's a way that the bank of industry could step in for those who are aggregating, maybe aggregating to add value here, or even if it's to export, whatever the case may be, this is just the opportunity that the way I look at banking in Nigeria, it's only the bank of industry that can fill that value, that hole, that gap. So that happened for us. It was unexpected. We didn't see it that way at first, but at the end we look at it and we see very interesting. This, it was an opportunity, but I, we also, I think I have to commend the bank of industry because they're the only, as far as I know, they're the only bank right now with that kind of fund, with single digits that can help this, a sector like ours presently in this in this economy so i i would like to encourage boi to see what they can do um, one hand reaching the other clients they have in the sector and vice versa but this this timing for the economy and still needing finance and funds to power the economy especially industry i have to really say thank you to boi and, and, the, and the asm fund Nigeria is a great country. It has all it takes to become a global economic power if the right resources are harnessed. No country can grow economically if it exports its raw materials and imports finished product. That is why the federal government through the Ministry of Mines and Steel and the Bank of Industry are working assiduously to ensure that the beneficiation of all its solid minerals are done in the country. In 2020, the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, presented a check of 268 million naira to the Presidential Artisanal Gold Mining Development Initiative, PAGMDI, at the launch of the Gold Purchase Program in Abuja. The initiative was flagged off in Kebbe State 
and His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari received the false gold bar from the Governor of Kebbi State, His Excellency Abubakar Atiku Bagudu, and Mr. Godwin Emefele, the Governor of Central Bank of Nigeria. Please recall that the Zamfara State Government in 2020 deposited its gold bars at the Central Bank of Nigeria. Nere, in her interview, also disclosed how several kilograms of gold output have been aggregated. There are opportunities out there waiting to be explored, and that is why at the Bank of Industry, we're always ready to go the extra mile to assist potentially viable value addition ventures with high employment generating potentials. That is all we have for you on this week's edition of BOI Impact. Kudos to all the women exploring and playing in areas hitherto dominated and reserved for men. BOI's Gender Business Desk is at your service always. I am Hadiza Olaoshebiko. Bye for now.